my uh, DFF project will look at Greenland's largest glacier and try to figure out how much it has been contributing to sea level rise uh, over the last century. So the historical data is really important here because we don't have a lot of places where, for example, how fast the ice was flowing and in what direction. We don't have very many places on the Greenland ice sheet that that was accurately observed before the satellite era. So we spend a lot of time looking through historical documents to find the um, very first measurements uh, in the Jakobshavn and Isbury region. And so we found you know, some of these original documents from the 1950s, which we will go about digitizing and then actually going to the exact same sites that they surveyed uh, using modern methods. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back and study uh, and resurvey some observations that uh, a French survey made in 1950s in uh, Jakobshavn Isbre in central West Greenland. So we have a direct comparison what was happening in the middle of last century to what's happening today to make sure that we can create a model that explains both middle of last century and today. So understanding what the glaciers were doing before the satellite era and before climate change really kicked in is important to act as a baseline for understanding the magnitude of climate change today. The better we can understand the Greenland ice sheet term in present day sea level rise, the better we can understand the Greenland ice sheet term in uh, projected future sea level rise. Understanding sea level rise and how it's going to behave in the future is really important for planning uh, to adapt to climate change. And so understanding uh, how much sea level rise different places can expect and when is really critical to planning uh, our infrastructure response uh, for adapting to climate change. And it also provides awesome motivation for mitigating climate change. I mean, if, if we can show this is the difference of sea level rise on a business as usual scenario, and then this is the sea level rise on a Paris Agreement scenario, you can really see the difference uh, from mid-century through to the end of the century. And that should provide really strong motivation to strongly embrace uh, the Paris Agreement.